Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday, so it's time for us to sit down and catch up with a brand new vlog. Uh, this week had a quite a few exciting things happen, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the Kosamoff the Hungry. I talked about this last week. Uh, last week, we talked about how you had to camp the orb and then only one person could loot it. And it was really frustrating and I wasn't going to bother. And between that point of time and now, they have fixed it. So not only can multiple people loot the orb, but there is no longer a spawn time or cooldown or anything of the sort. You can just show up and loot it. You don't have to wait for somebody else to loot it. You don't have to wait for a timer to come up on an hour. The hardest part is finding the cave, and there are lots and lots and lots of guides out on YouTube showing you exactly how to do that, as well as um, coordinates of each cave and photos of the entrances of the caves in a very helpful Wowhead comment on the Cosmo the Hungering page. So there is no good reason why you can't take like an hour or so. It takes a little bit of time to get around all the caves. So give yourself give yourself like an hour or two. Um, there's no good reason why you can't go do the whole quest chain, do the whole thing with Draxel, get all your orbs, um, and then do the Cosmo of the Hungering World Quest. Right now, the World Quest for the next 10 days starting now is going to be rewarding the pet. So if you don't have your Hungering Claw yet, you can do the quest chain and go get it really easily, but the mount doesn't appear to be dropping just yet. Or maybe that's just on my server. Maybe it's different on different servers. So certainly go try it and see um, to check on the Hungering, the Cosmos world quest. Um, after you finish the quest chain, you've unlocked it. Uh, you've looted the last orb next to Draxel is the last part that you need to do. Once you've done that, all you do is you go to your world map, you click over to the Eye of Ashara, the one that you looted an orb from in the real world, and then you look there to see if see what the world quest reward is, and that'll tell you. So yeah, um, so I went and did all the orbs. I'm not going to be making a YouTube guide on how to do that just because there are some excellent ones out there already and because I have already looted all the orbs and I would have to go back in time if I wanted to make that. So uh, so yeah, uh, that's been fixed real easy, no camping, and uh, I'm very happy that it's fixed because I want now that I have my claw, somebody actually gave me the claw before the fix or maybe it was right after the fix hit, but in any case, before I went and farmed my own, uh, somebody was actually very nice enough to give me a hungry claw as sort of a birthday gift, which was super sweet. And now I can get more, and hopefully the mount once that world quest pops up, so that's that. Um, Blizzard confirmed this week on a different topic that there was, in fact, a bug with the drop rate of legendaries after the first one. So through the week, a lot of people have been noticing that their guildies and friends that had gotten legendaries were getting second ones before anybody else had their first. And this was like a really common occurrence. This was happening all the time. And everybody online, or most people online, was like, oh man, that's really weird RNG. It's really, it's really weird. And for once, it actually wasn't real weird RNG. Blizzard has officially confirmed that was a bug. They have rectified that bug at this point. But now we're in kind of a sticky situation where there's a bunch of people with two legendaries. There's way more people that have zero. And there's no really good way to fix that. So people are throwing around, a, people, a lot of people feel that it's unfair that some people have two legendaries when they have zero due to a drop rate bug that nobody knew about. That's unfair. That, I think that's pretty, pretty accepted to say that that is unfair. Uh, but there's no, some people are going, so, saying, oh, hey, just take away their second legendary and sure, you'll piss off, you know, 5% of players, but the other 95% will be happy. And I think that's a terrible solution because you can't just take away people's loot. They weren't exploiting anything. They just got lucky and they got lucky again. And like, if I had, if I had something drop and I'd put it on and I'd start parsing out my DPS with it, and maybe I started adjusting my gear, or even if I hadn't, even if I just got it and went, cool, I'm the luckiest person ever. If they took that away from me, that there would be blood. Like, that's not okay. You can't just do that. Um, no matter how few people it affects, no matter how unfair it is, you can't take people's loot away unless they were specifically exploited to get us. That's out. Um, another solution that's been thrown around is increasing, and I think they might do this just based on a hunch. I don't know. Um, I don't have any information. But I think another thing they could do is increase the drop rate on legendaries if you don't have any. If you have not gotten your first legendary, adding some amount of increase and who knows how much to the drop rate to help people catch up a little bit. Now, I think that's the reason I think they might do that is because I think that's something that might have been done at some point anyways. I know they were talking about legendary catch-up mechanics for, you know, when you're leveling an alt halfway through the expansion, you want to catch up or you're just getting in late to the game and everybody's got all these legendaries and you don't. Um, they were talking about adding ways for people to catch up in legendaries and um, also target specific legendaries. So those may be things that just happen later down the X pack and maybe this problem will just be rectified then and these people will have a short term advantage, but they might kick that in early, but maybe not. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of, it's kind of sucky for everybody. Like I didn't get it. I didn't get any legendaries. I still have none. I haven't been trying as hard as I possibly could. I should be spamming a couple hours of heroics every night, but by the time I'm done work, 
and like you know you've made dinner and you walk the dog and you caught some pokemon and like you get everything ready and done in your day it's like eight o'clock at night by that point and then i have like two hours before i should really be going to bed and i, I barely even want to play wow let alone just spam dungeons uh because i'm just so sleepy so i haven't been trying as hard as i could for legendary so i don't have one yet and I'm lucky enough to be in a guild that's not going to bench me because I don't have legendaries. Um, in our guild specifically, we've gotten two legendaries so far. One of them is on one of our raid healers, which is great. Um, and then another one is on a DPS who's not raiding with us. It's just somebody's. It's just like a, a casual member that's not planning on raiding with us. And nobody else has any. So we're not a cutting-edge mythic guild. We only raid two nights a week and we're only doing heroic. So we're not in a situation where they're going to bench people that don't have double legendaries. But that is a situation that could happen in, in Mythic Guilds. If your guild is doing cutting-edge progression, they are absolutely going to try and take people that have multiple legendaries over people that don't, because they're 895. Even if you didn't get a good legendary, that is a huge item level boost over over the gear that we can get now. So I see why it's a problem. It sucks that it's a problem. It sucks that this bug made it live. But it's one of those situations where it's like, what, what are you really going to do? And at the end of the day, it doesn't affect me too much. I do feel bad for people that may be getting benched because the RNG gods did not favor them and the RNG gods favored other people. But if the other people, if you deserve that raid spot more because you are a better raider, you are better at mechanics, you do better damage for your item level, over time as you catch up in legendaries or as your guild realizes that person that got double legendaries is kind of bad, if they are, who knows, then you will probably be able to earn your spot back. Unless your guild's really weird. Guild politics are strange. Anyway, so that's that. Um, they have added in, they have announced this I believe today, paid battle tag changes so on every bnet account you get one free battle tag change so if you um if you create your battle account and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna be hamster monster 1327 don't don't message that i don't know if it's a real thing or not but i'm gonna be hamster monster and then you play and you live your life as hamster monster for a while and then you wake up one day and you go you know what i hamsters are weird Monsters are scary. This is just terrible. This isn't working out for me. You can then change your battle tag to something else. And that's free. And that's always been free. And that presumably always will be free. So that is, has nothing to do with this next part. Which is if you have done that. And you changed your battle tag. And you once again change it to something that is unsustainable. Or you don't like. Or you don't want it. Or it's the same as somebody else. And you think they're stinky. Or like whatever. You can now pay Blizzard $10 for additional battle changes, battle tag changes after that point. So presumably the money is just to deter people from doing it all the time. And also, so Blizzard makes money because they like doing that. Who doesn't? Uh, and I think this is a good thing. I don't personally need it after I, I use my free battle tag change. And then I, after that, I'm good. I'm, I'm in a battle tag right now that I can't see myself needing a different one of. The, my favorite thing about the battle tag system is that you don't need to have like your actual battle tag made of letters doesn't need to be unique because they add that four letter appendix to the end of it anyways. So you can just pick like whatever, it can be your handle and it doesn't have to be a super unique one and you'll still be able to get that battle tag. So I'm good for a while, but I think this is great for people that have twice gotten themselves into names they didn't want to. Or I guess if somebody wants to have a new battle tag name every month, I don't know if there's gonna be a cooldown on it, but if somebody feels like having a new battle tag name every month, I mean, and you got the money for it, go for it, I guess. It'll be really confusing if somebody does that on my friends list because you, you constantly won't know who they are. But um, one thing is if you set battle tag notes for your friends and they change their battle tag, um, the note doesn't change. So you'll still be able to figure out who it is from their note. So if you have any friends that you think are going to do that, then just set notes so you know who it is or just take them off because they're kind of weird. Uh, so yeah. Um, in WoW, other things in WoW, raids open next week. So raids open on the 20th, Tuesday. So this is our last week of WoW in Legion without having the raids open. Raids open on the 20th. I believe LFR is going to be slowly opening after this point. I believe this is just getting us into normal heroic, probably mythic. And then I think mythic, dash, <laughs> mythic plus dungeons are also opening on Tuesday. Uh, so my guild is going to be as of Wednesday because our, our raid nights are Wednesday, Thursdays. We're going to be raiding again. And I'm pretty, I feel like I'm pretty ready for raids. I'm item level... 846 as shadow. I'm actually 847 as holy just because my shadow trinkets are a little lower item level, but that's because they're better itemized. Um, so I feel pretty ready. I haven't been spamming. I haven't been doing as many mythics as I possibly could. I haven't done any mythics yet this week just because mythic dungeons make me fall asleep. Um, not because they're too easy and not because they're too hard, just because they're like once you've done them, you've kind of done them. And while it's fun to hang out with your friends and kill some dungeons and get some loot and hopefully get legendaries, but who knows? Um, for whatever reason, they just put me right to sleep. So I'm, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much ready 
to go into raid. But the other thing that starts on the 20th, along with the raids opening, is the arena season, and I am nowhere close to ready for that. I don't have my honor talents. My roster druid's gear is like 780 something. It's really gross. She doesn't have any order resources. She doesn't have any artifact power because I haven't been playing it because I haven't, I've been trying to play my priest and I've been barely even playing my priest. My priest is behind a Suramar. Um, that's the other thing is I haven't opened the, uh, the Arcway or the Court of Stars on live because uh, I'm really lazy. When it comes to Suramar dailies, I haven't been rep grinding on Suramar. I haven't even been progressed. There's more of the quest chain for me to progress. I just haven't done it. I barely, I don't think I'm even finished excuse me, my profession questions yet, so I kind of burned out after leveling, after leveling my priest and leveling my druid and doing a good chunk of Suramar and all of my tailoring question, I burned out on linear questing. It's all great, don't get me wrong, the voice acting's great, the stories are interesting, and I do want to maybe on a weekend sit down and do more of Suramar when I have time to pay attention to the story, but for right now, at the like at the end of a weekday, I just don't have it in me to do any more than my emissary quests and maybe a couple more world quests for artifact power. That's kind of where I cap out. So I need to do stuff on my druid. I need to, at the very least, get my honor talents. I hope that gives me more artifact power. It's unfortunately looking like there is not going to be very good artifact power from PvPing, so I may also need to do some world quests on her. Hopefully get her some gear. Hopefully the Battlegrounds give me some gear, but who knows. And then once I have that, then I need to practice and tweak my UI and maybe find some teams and try and do a little bit of arena. Nothing super serious. I don't want to be pushing raiding really at all in the first season. I want to take a whole season to get myself reacquainted with how everything works and make some new friends and just practice. So it's going to be a very low pressure for a season, but I'm not, I'm not even close to ready for it yet. So we'll see. Um, one thing that I am going to be doing to kind of propel me towards, at the very least, getting my honor talents is I'm going to be bringing back um, baby battlegrounds, except they'll be more like grown-up battlegrounds, a uh, Give Me My Talents edition, where it's just like the battleground videos that I did last year um, on like a mage and a rogue and a warrior and whatever, except that it'll be at, at max level on my on my Rester Druid main um, as I grind towards my honor talents. I want to do some battleground videos where I just kind of hang out in battlegrounds and chat and make like those, those 15, 20-ish minute single battleground videos where we talk about PvP stuff. So I'm going to bring those back. I want to try and get one of those out every week, um, either on Thursdays or Sundays. I haven't decided on that yet, uh, but that's coming back. What else? Blizzard voice chat is moving into beta, and I know this because they emailed me with a beta invite for it, not because of anything special about me, just because they randomly select people to do that. And I haven't tried it yet. I think the weird thing is I hope they send these out in groups linked by Battle.net friends. Otherwise, how are you supposed to test it if you don't have anybody, if you don't know anybody that also has it? Like, how are you supposed to do that? Uh, but I really, 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 really hope that it's good. Specifically for Arena. Pugging in Arena in WAD and when I was doing it is always like, hey, you got Discord, you got Curse, you got Skype, you got, like, whatever. You, there's too many different ways different third-party ways to talk to people, none of them are secure, and those are a huge way for people to harvest IPs for DDoSing, which is kind of a problem in the arena community, particularly towards the higher end. And not even just DDoSing, but like doxing and stalking and harassment and just like all sorts of stuff you don't want to go, go near. So I really hope that the Blizzard voice chat works not just well, but beautifully. It needs to be really, really good in order for people to adopt it. And that's what I want. I want it to be the default choice. Like if I get into a random threes group finder group, I want it to be Blizzard voice. And I want that to be easy to get into. I want it to work really well. I need it to be not push to talk because you can't have that in arena. That's just bad news. There probably should be a push to talk option if people are using this for raids and whatever, but I just, I just need it to be good. So fingers crossed. I don't have a lot of hope because they have tried to do this before. This isn't the first time that they've tried to put voice chat into the game and the last time flopped horribly, but I, I, I gotta, I gotta believe. So that's that. And and the other thing is that'd be good for using it in other Blizzard games as well, like uh, Diablo, if you're playing Diablo with some friends or maybe you're hanging out in Hearthstone or whatever. Um, they have announced the BlizzCon virtual ticket goodies. So I am a big virtual ticket person. I don't usually have enough money to travel to BlizzCon. That's a big deal. Um, but I, I usually have enough money to get the visual, the, the virtual ticket, and I usually do that, although it's always, it's like 40 bucks for the live stream, and half of what I watch in the live stream is the stuff they stream for free on Twitch anyways, which would be the esports stuff, but anyways, um, I usually get the virtual ticket, and they have announced the in-game bonuses, which they always do, and there is a BlizzCon Bastion skin, which looks pretty cool for Overwatch, there's uh, some Diablo stuff I don't care about, there's some Heroes of the Storm stuff I don't care about because I don't really play those games, 
Uh, there's a StarCraft portrait and then something else for StarCraft. I also don't play StarCraft, but they, they haven't even announced what it is. It's part of like a new secret thing that's not out yet. <clears throat> but for WoW, they have always historically done Murloc pets. They've done a Murloc pet for BlizzCon. And this year is a little bit different. It's still a Murloc pet, but there are two of them and you get to pick one. There is an Alliance Murloc, there's a Horde Murloc, and with your virtual ticket or actual BlizzCon ticket, you get one of them. And presumably, there's no way, like, I can't imagine there'd be a way for you to get two of them. Like, it's not like you can just buy a second ticket and apply it to your account and pick the other pet, because once your account has been upgraded, you can't add another one to it. So people are really going to have to pick one or the other, and while that doesn't sound like a big deal, there's a lot of collectors that put a big emphasis on 100% in their collection. These are people that have, like, dug on eBay for iCoke China promotional pets. These are people that have put so much effort and a lot of money and a huge amount of time into getting as many battle pets as humanly possible. And there is going to be an empty spot on their journal and there's going to be nothing they can do about it. So that's kind of a controversial thing to do. I see why they're doing it. It's kind of on the tails of the Warcraft movie, movie Horde vs. Alliance uh, stuff. And I get why, but I don't agree with their decision. I wish they had either just done one pet or done two pets and give us both. Or maybe do, do one pet and then let us earn the other one. Maybe put it in a vendor in game. That'd be dumb. I don't know, but this 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 way is not great. But it doesn't upset me too much, just because personally, I haven't been 100% in pets anyways. I am not digging on eBay for Ico China promotions from 2000 and whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, the bastards could look cool though. I'll still I'll probably still be doing that because I always like watching the opening ceremony. It's gonna be weird without Chris Metzen. Chris Metzen's retiring. That's another thing that happened this week, is he announced his imminent retirement. So he is presumably not going to be giving the opening. He's always been such an amazing hype man uh, on the opening ceremonies of BlizzCon, so somebody else has got to do that this year. That's going to be weird. They're losing a lot of people. A lot of people are moving away from Blizzard, like, moving on, and none of it seems super, super, like, ominous, but the amount of people that are moving on from Blizzard is mildly concerning just as a statistic. But I'm sure it's going to be fun. Um, <clears throat> so some non-WoW things, uh, related to the channel, I wanted to address a question that has not come up yet, but probably will at some point, um, and that is, what's with all the number list videos? So if you look at the last, like, five videos I've done, you will notice that a alarming amount of them are number lists. I've got the eight cool things about Zabra Hex, seven, no, seven cool things about Zabra Hex, eight cool things from the patch 7.1 notes, I've got top ten pets in terms of four legion, in legion, cutest ones. And this is a pretty big departure from the types of videos I've been making in the past, so I wanted to take a second and sort of explain that. Uh, the reason that I am moving more towards, not exclusively, but more in the direction of number list videos is because people watch them. Um, statistically, it is a proven fact that people are more likely to watch a video, even if it has the same content, if it is structured as a number list. And I didn't use, to, I ha I've, I've been kind of resistant to this for a while just because the format always kind of irritated me. But then I realized the thing that irritated me about the numbered list format is when, like, 20 of the 24 items are garbage. Like, as long as the list is filled with interesting and informative and well-presented content, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with it being a list. So I am going to be doing more of those. I'm going to be doing my very best to make sure that each item on these numbered lists is good content and not just, like, crap that I'm feeding you for views. So uh, that's what that's what's up with that. And I am trying to move towards a schedule. I, I'm not going to commit to it just yet because committing to things has a bad habit of making me not doing them. But I'm not. But I'm trying to move towards a schedule of six videos a week. You're going to notice this um, as the weeks goes on. Go on. And the day that would have no video would be Saturday, so people have an extra day to catch up in the vlog and find out what's going on. But I'm trying to move to having videos Monday through Friday and then an extra one on Sunday. So of those six videos, theoretically, um, one of them's the vlog. I want to do a new guide every week, whether that's a gold guide or a leveling guide or a pet guide or like a whatever guide I want to do. The vlog, one new guide. I want to do one new episode of that battleground thing or whatever like serial content I'm doing that week. And then the other three videos are going to be either um, list style articles, other styles of articles, or if I'm like reviewing a random game or just like any other video would go on those other three days. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. 
once I have convinced myself that I can stick to that and continue getting that much content out, then I will be redoing my channel trailer to have that information in it and then maybe sticking it up on the banner of the channel so you know exactly when everything's going to go out. So if you come back to the channel on a Wednesday, you know what time the new video is going to be out. You have a vague idea of what it's going to be about. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter to get sneak peeks at whatever I'm working on. So that's been up that. <clears throat> Another thing that's just a me thing today, um, this week, is I'm getting a new phone. And I actually have it on my desk and I haven't opened it yet, which is an amazing thing of self-control, at least for me. Um, my, I have, I'm an Apple person as far as mobile devices. I use a Windows computer, but I also have a Mac computer. Um, I've used Android in the past. I'm not like die hard about any particular operating system, but I enjoy dabbling in all of them. And for my own stuff, I, I like using iOS. So I have an iPhone um, and my carrier has a plan, which I'm on, which is um, iPhone forever. So whenever the new iPhone comes out, I get to upgrade to it. And fancily enough, upgrading this time with it, with this new iPhone 7 coming out meant that I was able to get it on the first day it's available, which means I have an iPhone 7 on my desk, which is really cool uh, because it's just part of my phone plan, which is like fairly reasonably priced, but just part of the phone plan is I get a new iPhone every time they come out, which is kind of fancy. So uh, yeah, I get to open that. I love opening stuff. Opening stuff is fun. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. There's been some, a lot of like huff and fuff. Is that a word? Nobody says that. Huff and fuss? Nobody says that either. There's been a lot of stuff in the media about the iPhone 7. Um, obvious negatives are the lack of headphone jack. That doesn't really affect me because I don't use it. But uh, it does have a very fast chip in it, which I'm really excited about. And um, that should future proof it for a while. It's actually twice as fast as something. I don't know. It's one of the fastest. It, it may be the fastest phone on the market right now. I like fast. Fast is good. Okay, so questions. Um, enough about the phone. Questions of the week. Uh, Kemya Ali asks, how did you and your husband meet? So this is an easy question. We met through online dating. Uh, this isn't something that I go about like telling the story of at family gatherings because there's a lot of social ideas about what online, online dating is and the kind of people that use it. So it's still got a bit of a stigma, but I firmly believe that that stigma is stupid. Um, plenty of normal people meet through online dating. There's nothing wrong with online dating. And it's kind of convenient to be able to look at a profile of somebody before you go on a date with them to find out if they have kids or if they want, if they like animals or if they like dogs or if they eat meat or, you know, if they have rituals in their basement, like whatever. It's nice to be able to find stuff out before you go on the date with them. So that's, that's where I met my husband was on an online dating site. Um, and that's why, that's why I ended up moving so far away from home was because, it just happened to be that the person that I worked out with was not geographically close to me. And that's a pain in the butt. Um, long distance relationships are awful. It was really, really hard. Um, obviously less hard now because I moved to the America and we live together and we're married and stuff. But uh, yeah, we met through online dating. I strongly recommend it. Although if you do decide to try online dating, I do recommend at first looking at people reasonably local to you. Maybe maybe don't go into the international pool right off the bat because immigration, as I have found out, very, very expensive. Okay. Uh, Joe asks, hey, I'm about to start playing WoW next week. Should I buy Legion straight away or focus on the other expansions? So as I understand it, when you buy base WoW, it gives you every expansion, including Warlords, and then you buy Legion. So there's the two things to buy. Um, Legion will give you Demon Hunters and it will give you access to all the new Legion, Legion zones. You won't need that right away, I don't think, um, because you need to have a high-level character in order to even make a Demon Hunter. Now, when you purchase the basic starter pack and it gives you Warlords of Draenor, I'm pretty sure, I'm not, I'm not a positive, but I'm pretty sure it gives you a boost, and I know that Legion gives you one. Maybe you only get the one with Legion. Uh, for a new player that has not played WoW before, I don't recommend using your character boost. It's too much information all at once to start out at level 90 or 100 or whatever. It's too much. Um, so I recommend get the base game. Don't get Legion just yet. Get the base game, make a new character, uh, level it. Um, you can level it as far as the end of Warlords, which is going to take you a little bit of time, especially if you're new to the game. And don't, don't, don't rush it. Like mess around with professions, go fishing, do quests, meet NPCs, learn about the story, make friends, join a guild. You can do all sorts of things before you drop the extra money for Legion. And then if you're doing these things and you find out that you really hate WoW after all, then you didn't spend that extra money. Once you've reached Warlords, of course, you should absolutely buy Legion. And at that point, if you've just, you have a character boost. So once you've reached, say, 100, and you get, you decide you're all about WoW, you get Legion. Then you have the option to make a Demon Hunter. Then you have the option to boost another character. So maybe you leveled a mage, but you decide you really want to be a priest. 
then you don't have to, you get that free boost, so you don't have to do it all again, or Demon Hunter started 100 too. So then you've got a couple of different options for what class you play, but you've experienced the base game, and you have a good idea of how everything works, or at least a basic idea by that point. So I don't recommend you buy Legion right away, I do recommend you buy it once you get to the point where you need it, but that's not until level 100, um, and that's going to take you, take your time getting there. There's no need to rush it. I'm sure a lot of us would like to go back in time to when we first played WoW and live that over again, just because it's just a really magical thing when you're first doing it. Of course, once you get over that hump of learning things. I never really liked games a lot the first time I played them, just because I really hate that feeling of not knowing everything. Um, it's one of the things that's kept me in WoW instead of moving to a different MMO is that stage where you don't know how to craft a thing, you don't know how to get to the place, you don't know what you should be doing at a certain level, and you certainly don't know how to get there. Like, I hate that feeling. And so yeah, get over that and get Legion once you need it, but you won't need it right away, is my personal opinion on that. Uh, Isla Cell Gaming asks, are you going to do a video for the pet battle in Dalaran? You think it's a world quest. What is the strategy? So I have already done those videos. Uh, if you look at my channel page, if you're on youtube.com slash and the first row should be uploads. The second row below that, I am pretty sure, is Broken Isles Pet Battle Guides. So that's a big playlist. It's got like 30 videos in it because there's a lot of different world quests. But what those are is those are all strategies... Yeah, so it's right underneath the uploads. Those are all strategies for pet battle world quests in Legion, and that includes the ones that happen in Dalaran. So there's, I believe, four, five, six, some amount of them um, are going to be at the Dalaran, quest, Dalaran pet tournament, and those videos are in there. You've got your Galvestin, you've got your Splint Jr., you've got your Stitches Jr., Jr., your Heliosis. All of those videos are there in that playlist, so that's where you're going to find all my strategies. Um, those are two pet strategies whenever possible, and otherwise just the most effective strategy I could come up with. So yes, I have done those. They are available on the channel right now. And uh, there's a couple different ones, so you want to figure out which one you need. All right. So that has been my week. I'm going to open up my new phone. Uh, if you guys have any questions you would like answered on a vlog, just leave them as comments on the most recent vlog. And let me know how your week has been. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.